morning folks hope you're doing well it's about 5 30 a.m i was going to come in a bit earlier but i decided to just leave it half an hour later sun rose about quarter to five but we've got a blanket of cloud rolling across some light rain and drizzle forecast much needed we've had a good fortnight of bright sun 28 30 degrees some days which is not not the best conditions for photography not in this place but nevertheless there's always an opportunity for a shot somewhere <laughs> so today i'm just going to wander around went up to an ancient trail this is about a mile away from the normal shield forest nature reserve and <laughs> Some of the trees in here are just epic. I mean, mind-blowingly beautiful. A little bit of clear sky. Maybe a touch of sun if we're lucky later. Wander through some of these beautiful old trees. And I'm going to kick off the flora identification mentioned in my previous video. I want to try and get some of the the trees and the shrubs down. I mentioned I got a bit of a hole in my knowledge, just one of many. But I'm going to start today with oak. I have to, it's just, it just has to happen. I'm sure 99.9% .9 of people can identify an oak. Oh, there's one. Raindrops on those leaves, how beautiful. Oh, I want to get my camera out now. So, yeah got an opportunity to maybe find a fallen branch or something and then perhaps have a look at a couple of varieties just to do a comparison record it take a photo of it and uh, pop it up on the screen so it's wiggle time need to get a wiggle on kids <laughs> somebody's asking for some breakfast I think I oh, hear yeah, you buddy hopefully your mum is gonna bring you a nice juicy worm today with all this rain Oh wow, oh wow. <sighs> Cockaburras. I bet that's about two inches tall, you know, if you saw it squawking. They have the best lungs. <sighs> right, back on track. Let's head over here where there's a little bit more light. Tiny oak sapling here, look. Isn't that cute? Let's move you out of the way, give you a fighting chance, eh? Although, that's caught underneath my tripod. Got to be so careful with your feet these days. These cleared areas, you don't want to do any damage. Just look at this. Oh, man. Right behind it is a huge trunk. Just over there. Another one round. Oh, right next to it here.
just, I just stand here for like 15 minutes. Call it a video. Some YouTuber I am. I don't like talking when the birds are singing. Let's go on with it, eh? Best way to identify trees and shrubs by their leaf. And as far as my identifications go, I'm not going into any great detail. or won't be introducing any Latin. Thank you, Lord, not a chance. Not going to get into families or genus. This is very, very simple. English only and enough to identify a tree that's it as you wander a woodland and you come across something that takes your eye and you're not quite sure what it is my goal is simply to as I work through my videos every now and again sorry I've got some gas and a spider Stop it, mate. Yeah, as I wander around, I'm just gonna do a basic identification, a simple identification, and really, that's, that's as much as I wanna do. Today, I had a list of facts, and I've left them at home, so, I can't share them with you. <laughs> what I have to do is take a few shots of these amazing, amazing trees. And then this time only, I'll pop those facts up on screen. In future videos, I'll come at you with just half a dozen key facts, where they are typically, where well, that, that particular tree is uh, distributed in and around the UK. I can't cover the rest of the world, I'm sorry about that. but. <laughs> Generally, most of this stuff is Northern Hemisphere. UK predominantly, pedunculate oak. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, also called the English oak and European oak. I don't think they're actually the same. I think they are. There is a difference, but it's so subtle, they've kind of adopted the same name. It's prolific and it dominates, as you can see in this place. Wowzers. So let's get onto this. Peduncular oak. A little bit further, sorry, a little bit further up this tra trail. From memory, I think we have a red oak. And that has some epic leaves on it, which are very different to these. So I'll show you these now. I'll take a few shots and I'll share a few facts about peduncular oak, English oak, I'll call it from now on, on screen. Yeah, I'll find some fallen leaf, a good sample, bring it with me, and then do a comparison when we get up to the red oak. Been here a little while now. It's about yeah. Um, it's just six a.m. These oaks are <laughs> I need a better camera to do this justice. But oh, man, let me show you this. I mean, what 
a phenomenal tree that is. That's got to be seven foot across at the base. I imagine it's hollow around the other side. Banging out substantial New Year's growth. I'm not going to wax on. But this tree, with this light, it's not, it's not going to be a great shot. But it doesn't have to be. Um, I think there's a little bit of hawthorn over on the right. I'm going to take a shot. Um, I've, I've framed it, but the light has died on me. It's become very grey, and this is very shadow. It's getting dark about a second, so I can't say whether or not for sure it'll work out. I'm going to take my shot and just very briefly try and show you how I've composed it. Taking as much glare off the screen as I can. What I've got basically is I've, I've come into the base of the tree here, centrally composed it. There's a, a noggin, I don't know whether that's right, but there's a noggin off the front of the tree there. And I focused on that, but I've gone in at F8 um, I'm underexposing my 0.7 of a stop, ISO 50, and it's giving me a 1.3 it's gone up there, 1.3 second exposure, and my histogram is just touching, blowing out in the highlights, which I'll try and remove in post anyway. So that is my shot. Just got a little bit more light coming through now. So I'm going to take my shot, and if I can work a bit of <clears throat> post-processing magic in those shadows, if I can do it justice, I'll pop it up on screen. Just drop my glasses. Uh. <laughs> Put them in my pocket for a minute. So that... <laughs> I remember this tree from last year. I came walking through on a summer's day. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning. I remember it that clearly. And as I came through, all around this canopy, it's like a huge stag head oak. <laughs> Although the limbs haven't quite poked the way through, there's a few dead ones there. Uh, <laughs> and it was full of butterflies. It was the most mesmerizing sight. Just this one, just this one tree. And that's jogged my memory about oak facts. Um, they're one of the most precious trees for invertebrate life because it's slow growing and long lived it becomes home to hundreds and hundreds of species of moth invertebrates and when a tree dies and falls it's home to beetle larva larvae beetle juice how far this canopy reaches. One of the most important trees and for Sherwood I understand that there's at least two sites I know of and I'm sure there's more are given over as uh, SSSI sites of special scientific interest and it's down to the ancient oaks that uh, provide home for ooh, easy provide home to uh, endangered invertebrates. When these babies take the last breath and 
hit the deck. It's not the end of the story for them by a long way because it takes an awful long time for them to decompose. They, they pr produce protection and food for so much, so much life. It's amazing when you start to dig into it just how precious they really are. Fancy not bringing me notes, what a doofus. Anyway, let's take another shot, grab some of this light, and then we'll go and pick up on this uh, red oak, hopefully. Hmm, this is going to be difficult. I'll check out what the light's doing, what sort of readings I get, and then I'll bring you back and just show you what composition I settle on. Okay, uh, I've taken a couple of shots. And what I decided to do, what I decided to do is try for a two-shot pano. I'm not big on shooting panos, but maybe I should be. Maybe I should. I should explore it a little bit more. I'll think about that later. Uh, yeah, so I've taken a, a two-shot pano, and I'll do some magic on it. I'll pop it up on screen if it pans out. Um, the shadows here are very dark and I've got light grey sky poking through the back so the chances are it's way beyond the dynamic range to to pull anything sensible out of it but I'm not quite sure I just can't I can't work this one out the light is so variable at the moment and it's so delicate you see the sky is grey grey crispy grey so anyway I've taken a couple of a couple of shots for a pano and then this shot which probably has the best chance of delivering anything. Can't get rid of the glare. Thanks so any. I've got the, the tree trunk just off to the right, picking up this clump of um, leafage and then not quite a third of the way up the bottom of the frame just the tops of these ferns to kind of give us a little bit of a border the sky is poking through because it always does Ooh. we've got some of these beautiful limbs shining shining through it's a, a lovely limb coming off there to the right so looking at the tree i've taken that just to the left of my frame obviously i'm much narrower than that but that's just to the left of centre. I've managed to capture the Y shape in the tree, touching the edge of the frame either side. And then This is going to be a nightmare to edit. Battery just failed halfway through that. <laughs> I've done so much waffling. I'm sorry about this. It's so disjointed, it's untrue today. Forgetting my notes has put me on a back foot. Uh, I can't recover from that. Editing this, it's going to be an absolute mare. Anyway, fresh battery. Buzz off. Where was I? Yeah, I got the ferns just in the bottom. In fact, I'm way down here. So I've got the ferns just taking the bottom of the frame like so. The tree trunk's just over to the right hand side. And that paints my frame something like so <clears throat> something like so settings I'm running at half a second shutter speed f8 I'm underexposing my 1.3 stops at ISO 50 and the reason I'm underexposing is because there's too much sky there so if I was to give myself a balanced exposure for the frame those highlights are going to be blown out I'm not going to be able to recover that so by underexposing my whole stop it gives me half a chance of pulling up the shadows enough and doing down the highlights enough just to give me a balanced exposure the best I can do in this light on this day at this time in this wood so that's another shot possibly a pano not sure about that one yet 
Fires are starting to buzz. That's probably my cue to pack up and clear off. Just up here, still. I'll pick my game up. It's going to take me time. This is a learning experience. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to find this this red oak again. I've got that leaf in my pocket. If it's not shriveled up by now. Move along, please. Nothing to see. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, sorry. Sorry, madam. I didn't see you standing there. I'll take your coat, please. Right. Just keep mooching on. It's quite surprising. <laughs> how the varieties start to appear quite clearly. I mean, if you take a look at this, it's got quite narrow, sharp leaves with deep lobes, but across all those branches, the leaf is narrow and deep lobed. Just down here, this oak absolutely doesn't have narrow, deep lobes. I've seen the species in my reference guide, but I don't remember the name. What I do know though, and what's important to me is, that my friends is an oak variety. And that I believe to be English oak. And that's all I'm really interested in. A primary, simple identification. Oh, oh, is this it? Right. When you think about the crown of an English oak, they're very full and they're very top heavy. And this, when I get a little bit closer, I believe is uh, red oak, which has the most amazing leafage in autumn. And absolutely, this is a red oak. These are amazing leaves. Look at the size of that. Let me just put this tripod away. The trunk. Not a familiar oak trunk. An oak trunk has a much gnarlier bark. And that's quite silvery. So when you see the size of that, and then you see the size of that leaf I picked up off the floor earlier, Come on, mate, out you come. Look at the difference. That's twice the size. And you can see the difference in the lobes. English oak, red oak, beautiful leaf. Very soft, rather crispy. Really nice to see. Get the sign of some of the colour here. The difference in colours. How beautiful, huh? How very beautiful. Come on, mate, turn over. There's some sun on your skin. Oh, look at this. Just look at that. Wowzers. What a monster. How can that be an oak leaf? That's an oak leaf. The difference here. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, it ran straight down my arm, that did. Oh. Serves me right. Have we done enough red oak? I think we have, haven't we? 
English oak, browsers, red oak. That's one disjointed, messy, haphazard, complicated, poorly narrated video I think I've ever done. And that's saying something. So if I can post-process the bejesus out of this and come up with something worth hitting the upload button on, go me. Bird song's lovely. Old English oak leaf. The red oak leaf. Staggering difference. You just can't mistake them. And it's, it's, it's a nice to know. You know, if you, if you get out and have a mooch about and come across something a little unusual, it's nice to just put a name to it. The next time you find one, you know what you're looking at. So that's cool. From a photographic perspective, to me, that's why I want to know more about it. I tend to find that the more I know about the nature I'm shooting, the better understanding I have of what I'm looking at. It sounds stupid, I know, but if I understand the life cycle of this amazing flora, then it will help me make better compositional choices and adventure choices perhaps too. So I may come out at different times to capture things in certain light. But if I don't know those things are going to happen, I can't make the decision to come out. So, yeah, I'm just, in a very simple way, keen to understand and learn more about the forest flora. With the ambition that it'll help me improve my game in photography terms. So... I've taken a few shots, which I'm surprised about. I don't know if they'll work out. Uh, by the time you see this, you will do. And hopefully they're okay. I know I've got challenging light conditions today, but I've come out with that in mind. That was the challenge for today, to come out and try and find a composition in this light. And it's, it's not dull, but it's not bright. It's just that in-between light. It's quite cold and blue and doesn't do these amazing trees justice. <laughs> but it's just nice to be out, to be honest. Before too long, I'll be a little bit more organised and hopefully have something a little bit more concise, less waffly. <laughs> Jeez, look at the gap in this tree. Sorry. <laughs> Distracted. But look, look at just look at this. What the hell? Ooh. Just completely splits off. Do you want to have a look around the other side? You're curious? Because I am. Yeah, come on, let's have a quick look. Beautiful little buttercups. What's up, buttercup? I've been unprofessional all morning, so I may as well continue. What I call Fungi City. Oh, that wasn't my ankle snapping, by the way. Although it did feel like it. There you go. What should we call him? Names in the comment section below, please. He needs a name. English oak. Beautiful tree to finish on. Oh, and his brother in the background there. Oh. And another one there, he's only bigger. Okay, so we need a name for this dude. Quiet section please. And uh, let's call this a practice run. How does that sound? Yeah, let's call it a practice run. So disorganised today. I was just 
learning, learning all the time. I was so eager to get out at half past four this morning. I almost forgot my tripod, rushed back in, giggled to myself, picked my tripod up, ran out the door, got all the way here, went to my bag, completely forgot my notes. It's like, why did I even bother? I spent like four hours preparing that yesterday for nothing. So, anyway, whinge, 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 whinge. The air is beautifully fresh. It smells clean and light and cool and awesome. I wish you were here. I really do. It's so spectacular this morning. You don't need sun. You just don't. It's nice, don't get me wrong. There I go waffling again. Anyway, I'm gonna make a move, take a few more shots, grab a drink of water and get the flock out of here. So, so anyway, I've got a lot of post-processing to do after this lot today. But hey ho, I want to leave you in peace. Thank you for watching and sticking with it so far. Really appreciate it. Uh, next time, Lord knows, we'll just see what happens when it happens. And uh, until then, please take care of one another. And uh, yeah, if you can't be good, just be careful. I'll see you soon. Bye.